Hello everyone. Today we are going to learn about some of the cutting edge advancements of solid state drives. So as we see, or as we are seeing in today's world, SSDs are replacing hard disk in more and more platforms. Uh, mainly different cloud platforms have also started using SSDs and we are seeing SSDs kind of everywhere in most of our consumer electronics as well as in enterprise data centers. Today specifically, we are going to learn about those two new advancements of SSDs, which are called as multi-stream SSDs and key value SSDs. I will be sharing some of the research work that I have done with my research group in our lab. And uh, this is its uh, interesting findings and challenges, the problems that we went through, as well as uh, the reading assignments, or the, if you are interested to dig further into this topic, then definitely we have published articles available in um, respective repositories like IEEE or ACM. So you can look those articles online and read about them. So let's begin with our discussion. First, let's recall the problem of write amplification. To remember, write amplification are those additional writes that happens inside SSD just to deal with its characteristics. And these rights are, have definitely nothing to do with application rights. And that's why, as we see here in the formula, we calculate write amplification factor as amount of data returned to NAND flash, which is amount of data returned by application or by host, plus the amount of internal management data that we are writing inside the SSD. So the total divided by amount of data written by host. And that's why it's an amplification factor. The ratio would give us the factor. Recalling why do we have such write amplification as we see here in this diagram at an initial stage, if we have few pages inside the block. Now SSD has these nice architecture, internal architecture of the device has this nice blocks, which consist of multiple pages where data is stored. These blocks get together. So we have multiple blocks and we have this hierarchy of plain, die, package, and so on. And each of the packages could be connected with parallel channels inside the SSD. But the basic granularity of data read and write is page. The basic granularity of data arrays operation is block. So now if we have a block that has four valid pages and two free pages, if we get a new data of one page, then we could write that one page because we have two free pages. But further, if we get two new pages, then we just have one free page. So we don't have enough space to write that data. While when we wrote the first, first time when the changes came, so we just invalidated the earlier page. Right, we just said that, hey, this page is stale and the new version, the correct version of that page is written over here. But now because when this new stuff comes, we don't have a page, we would have to reclaim the space that's occupied by the stale page, which is a garbage basically. So what we do is we launch garbage collection operation. What garbage collector would do is it would take everything that matters to us in this page, all the data that's valid, copy that data to an, another block, like such as here. And then because now this block will have two free pages, we could add the new stuff to that block as well. What happens to this older block is now we don't have anything that matters to us in this block after we have successfully copied the data, the valid data into another block. So 
we could directly erase this entire block. And thus, after erasing that entire block, we have a new block which has all the free pages and now ready to store new data along with the block that has the valid data from the previous version of the earlier block as well as the new pages accommodated into that. So this process will definitely create or generate some internal rights, right? Like here we wrote this four pages internally which were not issued by application and that internal rights is a major factor towards right amplification inside SSD. Now, we also know that minimizing this right amplification is one of our major priority because we learned earlier that SSDs have limited lifetime. Particularly speaking, SSDs have limited program erase cycles. So every SSD is composed of multiple NAND cells and every NAND transistor has certain number of program array cycle that it can sustain before it can no longer be used to store the persistent data. That's why SSD is something like medicines that has an expiry date, right? Use it or it would get wasted after that. So this expiry date rather than time counter, it's more of like program erase counter. So we want to judiciously utilize these program erase cycles, this limited number of program erase cycles that we have within each SSD. And that's where if we want to do that, we have to minimize this right amplification. Now, if we want to minimize write amplification factor, definitely we cannot minimize the writes that are happening from application end because that's the whole purpose of the persistent storage device, to store the data and to be able to retrieve the data from that. But what we can do is work on minimizing this internal additional writes that are happening because of the management overhead inside an SSD. Correct? So how do we do that? That's basically the problem that motivated invention of multi-stream SSDs. So a multi-stream SSD enables the device to maintain more than one open erase blocks. What we were earlier referring as block is also called erase block because the granularity of arrays is that block. So a multi-stream SSD would have multiple append points or multiple open erase blocks to store data of different lifetime in different physical location. So if we want to visualize that with these range of cars that I have here, particularly my favorite one is the one, the little green one with Panda inside, or maybe the convertible. There are two red and black. Um, well, all these cars are fancy and they look good. You can pick whichever you like. The purpose here to how these cars to demonstrate how legacy or how traditional SSD works is basically just like it works like a mixture. It just have one open erase block, like as we see as that open gate in the parking lot. And as in the order when rights come, each car represents different rights with different lifetime, how long this data is going to stay or how long this data is going to be valid in valid state on SSD, that it's, that it's lifetime. So every car model or color could represent a data with different lifetime. And, but in a traditional SSD or legacy SSD, because we just have one open erase block, like one open gate for the whole parking lot, what happens is depending in the in the order of the data arrival, like when data comes, in the same order we would be just storing that data inside these pages of the block. So visualize, we can visualize these as individual pages inside the block. And now multi-stream SSD is more of like, again, when this diverse, the data with diverse lifetime arrives, 
multi-stream SSG is more organized, like a gentleman over here, helping us to control the traffic and organize the cars inside this parking lot. But multi-stream SSD is also, as we just mentioned, it has multiple open arrays blocks. So that could be visualized as these multiple gates. And because of this multiple open arrays blocks, we could arrange the data that have similar lifetime inside each of these blocks independently. Now, many of you might be thinking, why, why do we want to do additional work? Or what's the advantage of doing this additional work, right? What's the point? Coming to the point, now imagine a situation where we have a block that has different pages, obviously multiple pages, and that's only three pages I could accommodate in my block. So let's say our block has only three pages. Now, each of this page has different lifetime. Let's say lifetime one, lifetime two, lifetime three. And let's have a simplistic understanding that lifetime one is smaller than lifetime two is smaller than lifetime three. So at any given time, let's say between lifetime one and lifetime two, the page one will be invalid, but page two and page three will be valid. So if garbage collection is triggered at this time between lifetime one and lifetime two, then we would have internal rights of these additional two pages, because we would have to, those are the data that still matters to us. So we would have to copy it safely to an, another block before claiming or before erasing this block off to claim the space occupied by this one page, one invalid page over here. If the garbage collection is triggered sometime between lifetime two and lifetime three, then still we would be in a situation where we have two invalid pages, but we would have additional internal right that would incur to copy this one valid page before erasing this block. In the final case, as you would have already thought, if our garbage collection is triggered after L3, in that case, all the pages inside the block will be invalid. So when garbage collection triggers, we don't have to copy any page or so we don't incur any additional rights, but rather we can directly claim the space occupied by these pages and directly erase the block. So as you see here, if we have pages of different lifetime inside a block, we have probability, depending on when garbage collection triggers, probable high probability of incurring additional rights. Here we just have three pages, but imagine an SSD that has very large number of page, like 64 pages or something greater than that. Then um, just before reaching a situation where we all, the lifetime of all the pages has completed, we will definitely incur, if we don't reach that situation, then it is highly probable that we would incur this additional rights, similar as what are happening here in this, our little example, when GC is triggered between L1 and L2, and when GC is triggered between L2 and L3. But now, in other scenario, if we have a smart logic or smart mechanism that helps us to arrange the pages inside the block according to their lifetime. So let's say these three pages inside the block are all with the same lifetime L1. In that case, if the garbage collection is triggered before L1, then definitely all the pages inside the block are valid. So no point. We don't have to, there is no page inside this block for which we could 
claim the space. So this block will not be a GC candidate. And if garbage collection triggers after the L1 is done, then in that case, all the pages in this block will be invalid. So definitely this block is a GC candidate, but even though it's a GC candidate, we are not incurring any additional rights. When, whenever GC triggers, we mark this block as GC candidate and we, we would be able to just erase this block because all the data inside the block is already invalid. So we do not have anything that matters to us. So we do not cause any additional right or we can say that our right amplification factor is one. So amount of rights that we actually do on SSD is exactly the same as amount of rights issued by application. So now this little example here shows us the benefit of arranging the pages inside the block according to its lifetime, like the ones that we have in this parking lot that was neatly filled with the help of this gentleman. So this is the whole purpose or motivation behind why multi-stream SSDs were designed. Thus, multi-stream SSDs would help us to minimize WAF. All data in same stream Right, the one, let's assume that one stream constitute of multiple one or multiple blocks, but all the data in one stream is expected to be invalidated at the same time, which also means that all the data in single stream has exactly same lifetime or approximately very similar lifetime. That's the end goal. But then now, as many, many of you would have already been thinking, or you already have a question that yes, 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 it looks good that if we are able to arrange neatly segregate the data according to its lifetime inside this multiple streams provided by multi-stream SSD, then the world would look brighter or we would have less right amplification factor and hence our SSD would live longer. But how do we do that? So that's the key challenge that multi-stream SSD poses in front of us that still research community is working on. Me and my group, we were one of the few people working in this area um, in the world. Um, we do have a very popularly recognized research article published in the top highly selective conference of IEEE Cloud. And I'm going to discuss some of our ideas that we presented there. And the article is definitely uh, open source by IEEE libraries. So you are open to go there online, download that and read and to get more detailed information about exactly how do we evaluate our research and further. So this challenge of assigning a correct stream ID to each piece of data with respect to its lifetime can be resolved on the operating system at various levels. Now, there are some research articles out there that resolves, that proposes a technique to resolve it at an application level because different applications could generate data with different lifetime. So just group all the data generated by each application in one uh, stream. There are a few other research articles that resolves or proposes to resolve this challenge in file system because what file system does is it takes this application input and it neatly arranges this application data or the workload data into files. Now files are of different types, like log files, um, directories, 
journals, depending on what file system are you using, index files. So depending on these categories of files that are identified or easily known at a file system level, we can group the data into each of these categories in one string. For example, group all the metadata that is generated all the metadata into one stream because we can expect that metadata is updated more frequently than the data logs or than the data blocks. Then there is an another way which we propose in our article that I was just talking about that is to do the stream identification at block layer. In this type of stream identification, now if we are discussing to do at the block layer, what block layer does, it, it takes these files as input and it generates LBAs or logical block address mapping. So it generates blocks. These blocks are neatly organized into fixed size data chunks. Right, every logical block is fixed size, maybe 512 kilobytes. Our operating system stack allows us to decide our block size whenever we boot it, whenever we boot a new file system. This is one of the options that you might have to configure. Definitely this option is, has some default. So if you don't do anything, it has default by itself to be configured with that, but you have an option of changing that if you want. So at this block level where we have this neatly arranged blocks, now these blocks could have data from multiple applications, multiple file systems, right? There could be different in a distributed cluster. Each node could have different local file systems and we could have different applications. For example, if we have virtual machine set up, then different VMs could be running different applications or workloads, or if we have containerized setup, for example, such as Linux containers or such as Docker containers, then each container could be running different application or workload of itself. Now there's multiple applications on multiple file systems, all this information get together at this block level. So at the block level, the advantage we have is we have information from this variety of instances about that. But the challenge is now, if we, once we know these blocks, all the blocks look same, they are of same size and we do not have any prior categorization such as types of files that we have at file system or types of workload or number of workloads that we have at application level. So then our challenge boils down to how do we categorize these blocks of data? We can imagine that as bricks of data or chunks of data into how do we identify correct lifetime of each of this chunk and then sort it and organize that into construct these nice organization of streams that has data with similar lifetime inside it, inside multi-stream SSD. Okay. 